rate limiting is a technique for restricting the number of requests to your API. We're going to talk about four rate limit algorithms, the fixed window, sliding window, token bucket, and concurrency algorithms. And I'll show you how to use rate limiting with minimal APIs. To get started with rate limiting, we need to add the rate limiting services. So we're going to say builder services, add rate limiter. And now we can configure the rate limiter options to add the specific algorithms that we want to apply in our API. So let's see what we have access to. On the rate limiter options instance, you can add one of the algorithms that I just mentioned. So here's the fixed window, sliding window, token bucket, and concurrency limiters. Let's start with the simplest one, which is probably the fixed window limiter. We need to add the name for our policy that is going to be applied. So let's call it fixed. And we need to provide an action to configure the fixed window rate limiter options. So let's go ahead and add that. Now on the options instance, we can configure a few things for the fixed window limiter. The obvious first thing is the window, which is a time span object representing how long the fixed window is. So let's give it a simple value, like a time span of 10 seconds. So I'm going to say time span from seconds and pass the value of 10. Another thing that we need to set with the fixed window limiter is the permit limit, which determines the number of requests that are allowed in this fixed window. So let's say we want to allow free requests every 10 seconds. This is how we would do it. We can also set the queue limit value, which tells how many requests we can queue in the meantime to be processed in the next window. So let's say we want to queue free requests. And you can also configure the queue processing order. Usually you want to do all this first to process the oldest request that came into the queue. This only configures the rate limiter policy with the name fix and adds the required services. But we also need to turn on the rate limiter middleware. So we're going to have to go here and let's say app use rate limiter. And this is going to turn on the actual rate limiter. How you turn on the rate limiter for a specific endpoint is by applying the policy with the given name. So let's head over to our order endpoints. And let's say we want to rate limit the order summary endpoint. With minimal APIs, you can call the require rate limiting method and specify the policy name that you want to apply. So we have the policy with the name of fixed. And with this, we have applied the fixed window rate limiter to our endpoint. So if I start the application, I'm going to show you how this actually works in practice. We have a fixed window of 10 seconds in which we can send three requests to this endpoint. So if I send one request, two requests, three requests, and I try to send one more, you're going to see that I'm getting a loader. This is because we hit the rate limiter queue. Our API request is queued. And when the fixed window expires and another one begins, we can send the API requests again. If I make a slight change here and say that the queue limit is zero, so there's no queue, and I start our API again, I'm going to try to send four requests in 10 seconds and let's see what happens. So this is the fourth request. And you can see we get back a 503 service unavailable response. So this is the default response when you encounter a rate limit for your endpoint. 503 service unavailable isn't really the correct response in this case. The more appropriate response would be 429 too many requests. So you can actually configure that by setting the rejection status code, you can access the status codes class and on it you can use the 429 too many requests value. So now the rejection status code will be 429. If I start the API again, we're going to intentionally hit the rate limit in our API. So if I keep sending requests to our endpoint, eventually we're going to run into the rate limit. And this time we get the 429 too many requests response, which is the one that we configured. Similar to the fixed window limiter, we have access to the sliding window limiter. So let's give it a policy name of sliding and let's see what we can configure on the sliding window limiter. We have a window with the time span value, 
which tells us how long the sliding window is. So let's say it is 15 seconds this time. The sliding window rate limiter is slightly different because it introduces the concept of segments per window. With a fixed window limiter, it's just one block of time that accepts a given number of requests. With a sliding window limiter, you have a block of time divided into segments. In this case, we would have three segments in our window and each segment would be five seconds long. Let's say the allowed number of requests for the sliding window is 15. In the first segment, we process five requests. We deduct that from 15. And in the second segment, we can now process 10 requests. Let's say in the second segment, we now process seven requests, which means there are only three requests left for the last five second segment. What happens after that is another segment pops in, our window slides, and we get back the request that we spent in the previous last window. So that would be the segment where we spent five requests, and that would be added to the total. So we would have, let's say, three requests, we didn't have any, plus five, we would get to eight. And let's say we don't have any requests, the sliding window moves again, and we get back the seven requests that we spent in the previously last segment for a total of 15. The number of allowed requests can never be more than the permit limit that you set here. So let's say it's 15. You can also configure the queue limit and queue processing order the same as you did with the fixed window limiter. So let's examine the other two limiters that we have, the token bucket limiter. So I'm going to give it a name of token and let's see what we have access to on the options. So the token bucket limiter is pretty simple. All you have is a given number of points that you can take out of a bucket. The number of points is determined by the token limit value. Let's say we only want to allow 100 requests to our API. We can configure to replenish the token limit, let's say every five seconds. So I'm going to say time span from seconds, five. And you can also configure how many tokens you want to replenish every period. So let's say we replenish 10 tokens every five seconds. Requests keep hitting our API and the token limit is detracted from, so eventually it comes to zero. Now what happens then is the replenishment period expires and we get back another 10 tokens that we can use in the next replenishment period, which is five seconds. So every five seconds you get back 10 tokens that you can use until you hit zero and then you encounter the rate limit and you get back a 429 too many requests. And the last rate limiter that we can use is the concurrency limiter. You add that by calling add concurrency limiter. You can give it a name of concurrency. And all it does is it configures the maximum number of concurrent requests that you can set on the API. So let's say we want to allow at most five concurrent requests to our API. This is the rate limit. Whenever you are below this threshold in number of API requests, you're going to serve responses normally, but as soon as you hit six or more concurrent requests, you're going to encounter the rate limit. If you want to disable rate limiting for a given endpoint, you can call the disable rate limiting method on the minimal API endpoint, and this is going to turn off all rate limiters for this endpoint. If you are using controllers, you have to use one of the available attributes. So you have the enable rate limiting attribute, where you can specify the policy name for the rate limiter that you want to apply for that controller. This is going to apply to all endpoints in that controller. And let's say for a given endpoint, you want to configure a different rate limiter, you can add the attribute again and specify a different rate limiter policy, or you want to disable rate limiting for a given endpoint, you can use the disable rate limiting attribute. So it's very simple between controllers and minimal APIs, you either disable rate limiting or use the given policy. Let me know in the comments which rate limiter algorithm is your favorite and also make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to my channel and until next time, stay awesome.